Hey there, podcaster. My name is Pat Flynn, and welcome to Beyond Beginner Podcasting. This is a relatively short video to help you graduate from beginner level and go pro with your podcast. And here are the things that we're gonna cover. First, I'm gonna give you three quick podcasting tips. These are things that you can take home with you even if you, if you have to leave early or stop this video. This is pre-recorded, so obviously you can come back and watch this later, but I just wanted to start off right off the bat with some high value stuff that a lot of beginners aren't thinking about, and these are things that you can actually do right away to help you grow your show. Next, three changes that pro podcasters make. This is mindset mostly, and this is going to be huge in, in order for you to actually grow into the next level of your podcasting career. This is how we begin to start giving ourselves time back so that we can actually start making changes that are actually going to move the needle for us in our show. And then finally, three calls to actions. These are things that you will be able to do, and I'll instruct you to do and exactly how to do them at the end of this video so that you can begin to start to actually take action and like I said, see those results. I'm so proud of you for watching this video and for understanding how important podcasting is and how much it is changing right now. It's it's so great because I remember when I started out, a little bit about myself first, I picked up my first mic in December of 2008. This was in my parents' home. I was a little disheveled. I had just gotten laid off and I wanted to have my hand at podcasting and see what it was like. To be honest, it was hard and difficult and guess what, we all start in the beginning and you probably remember what it was like to start off uh, as well. Here's a few years later, in August of 2015, I'm holding a different microphone, but this time it's a podcasting award. I won the Top Business Podcast Award from the Academy of Podcasters uh, at Podcast Movement in 2015, and since then, uh, I've just been growing and teaching other people how to podcast too. Actually, I have a show that maybe you've heard of before. It's called Smart Passive Income. It's been alive since July of 2010. And I have four other podcasts too, Ask Pat and a few others that I have uh, my voice behind. And it's just one of my favorite things to do. Since publishing my first podcast episode, I've accumulated over 60 million total downloads. I've keynoted several podcasting events, including Podcast Movement in 2015 and 18, and then very recently, PodFest in 2019 in Orlando. I've recorded over $300,000 in podcast advertising revenue, but more than that, I've had over a million dollars made in podcast product revenue, meaning online courses, coaching programs, uh, affiliate marketing, things sold as a result of the podcast. And guess what, you, you have a podcast. You have the ability with that asset to make money beyond advertising, and actually that's where I would recommend I start, uh, and or you start, and I'll talk more about that in a little bit. And then finally, my podcast has been featured in Forbes and New York Times, and it's just one of the best things that I've ever decided to do. So I'm so stoked that you have a podcast too, and I'm here to help you take it to the next level, because guess what? Teaching is one of my favorite things to do. I teach a lot of students online, both for free on my blog and podcast, and in actual paid online courses, for instance, Power Up Podcasting, which is a course that has helped thousands of students get started with podcasting. You don't need that, you're beyond that. Next, Smart From Scratch, which is beyond you too. This is for people who are just trying to figure out what their idea is, what their niche is. Uh, 123 Affiliate Marketing, which is a course to help people make money through affiliate marketing. And then I have an advanced podcasting course coming out, uh, if not already, Amped Up Podcasting, which is more of the advanced stuff for podcasting, which you're gonna get a glimpse of the kinds of things that I teach uh, today in this video. Now, before I go on, just like I said, teaching is one of my favorite things to do. I love teaching on stages. It's my favorite thing. However, teaching on stages uh, live like this is very difficult to do because there's travel, and there's coordination, these don't happen all the time. This video is as if I was teaching in front of you on stage and with my best material to help you with exactly what you need. You have a podcast, I want you to make it grow. This is my way to help you. So, let's get started. First, let's talk about three quick podcasting tips. So first of all, Tip number one, this is a super simple social share. This is a tool that you can use within an app that you've likely heard of before, and that is called Spotify. Spotify has come on the scene recently as a, a company that's been wanting to take control of where audio is listened to, and that's not just music anymore, that's podcasts. They just acquired a couple big companies, and they are here to stay in the world of podcasting. And there's a really cool thing you can do with Instagram that I'm gonna show you right now that'll help you get more downloads, subscribers on Spotify. So Spotify, I predict, is where a lot of podcast listeners are gonna be going to, and this is a great way for you to easily share episodes on that platform, and I'll show you right now. Okay, so here we are in Spotify, and yes, I do have a pizza making playlist, but I'm just gonna go to search and uh, look up my podcast really quick, and I'm gonna go to the latest episode, which is the one I wanna share. 
This is episode 362 with Christy Wright, where we talk about women and entrepreneurship. And I'm going to click on the little share button there, which uh, is the box with the arrow pointing out of it. I'm going to click that, and then you'll see right here it says Instagram Stories. Uh, There's also Facebook and Twitter here, by the way. Uh, I'm going to click on Instagram Stories, and immediately you're going to see Instagram open and open a story. This will share it to everybody who is following me on Instagram Stories. And uh, actually, it's kind of right here in the upper corner. There is going to be a link or a place for people to click to then directly open up Spotify and listen to the show. So this is a really, really nice way to share individual episodes, especially once they come out. No, it doesn't play the little audio file with the clip and stuff. That's totally okay. I would set this up beforehand. So what I would do is actually, uh, let's do, I would do something like this. Uh, Let me discard that. And then I'm going to go here and uh, do something like, hey, everybody. Hey, what's up, everybody? Pat Flint here. I just recorded and published an amazing episode with Christy Wright where we talk about women and entrepreneurship. And on the next screen, I want you to click on the upper left-hand corner to click and listen to that right now. It's awesome. Okay, so I'm not going to actually do that, but you get the idea. Okay, next tip number two, rankings and reviews. Yes, you likely know there are rankings in iTunes and Spotify and Apple, uh, and also you could see your reviews, but it's not always easy to see them all in one place, so I wanted to share a couple tools for you. These both essentially do the same thing. You could choose the one that you like best. I'll show you both. That is PodKite and Chartable. These are websites that tap into the API of podcasts and directories to understand, well, what's ranking, where you're at, where where were you, and what your uh, reviews are as well. Let me show you. All right, so if you go to Chartable.com, this is where you can get podcast analytics. And if you sign up now, I'm actually going to log in for you to show you what this looks like. But it's free to use, at least at this point in time. So I'm going to log in really quick. So as you can see here, when you log in, after you connect your podcast, this is mine up here. You can see some data right here on the dashboard, like how far you've climbed or where you're at in certain rankings in different categories, which is always good to know. If you want to see your reviews, just click on reviews. And It doesn't just give you reviews in your home country. It also gives you a chart of how many you've gotten on each day and also reviews from other countries too. As you can see, United States here, Canada here. Let's see, any other countries? Um, Australia. That's not really a very useful review, but that's still good. Five stars. I like like it. (laughs) And then some other things here like charts uh, that are a little bit more detailed than what you saw on the dashboard going into all the different uh, platforms. Uh, I think it's actually just Spotify and Apple Podcasts here for now, but likely it's going to add more later. Podkite. Very similar thing. Uh, With this one, it is paid after your first podcast. As you can see, you could track your own podcast for free, and uh, any more after that you have to pay, but this also is a great service. I'm gonna log in and show you what this one's like. So as you can see, very similar uh, in terms of the dashboard and what it can give you, rankings in various countries. Uh, Also, Google Podcasts is here as well, which is great, your latest reviews all in one place. And you can see them here on the left-hand side as well. And this is in beta, I believe, at this time, so it's likely going to add a lot more things. Plus, with Chartable and Podkite, you can actually send emails to yourself to see where you're at so that you can get it just directly into your inbox, which is pretty amazing. So hopefully that's a nice handy tool that you can use. And again, it's free to use uh, both of them right now, which is great. And then finally, tip number three, Let's do a quick metadata audit. That is your titles, descriptions, your things that you have going on in your Apple store and just your your, your podcast in general to make sure we're following all the guidelines and you are using best practices. Okay, so here we are in the iTunes on your desktop. And this is a great place to see like a lot of things that are happening all at the same time. Uh, By the way, this is where I usually go to do research because it's a lot easier than in your app. So if you go to, for example, uh, management and marketing here, which is a subcategory of business, you can see a lot of what's hot and what's going on, what's new. I often look at what's new to see like, okay, well, who are the up and coming uh, podcasters out there that I can maybe connect with and, you know, help out and and, and, uh, potentially feature on my show or, or vice versa, those kinds of things. You can see rankings for various podcasts here as well, which is great. Uh, but I'm going to go to my show really quick. And a couple things I want you to keep in mind. Number one, do not keyword stuff in your title. So this is the title of your podcast and especially in your author name. They're cracking down. They're actually uh, removing podcasts from uh, iTunes and Apple if you include things like if this were to say Pat Flynn, blogger, podcaster, author, keynote speaker, um, entrepreneur, marketer, all that sort of stuff. They see that right away. They're gonna they're gonna take your show away, and a lot of people have taken their sh- have gotten their show taken away, uh, and it's been a hassle to to go and get it back. So make sure you pay attention 
uh, to that. Uh, the second thing is your description. I think a lot of us podcasters often overlook how important the description is. Remember, when people come here, two things. They see the artwork first, and then likely they begin reading well, is this, is this a podcast I actually want to click play on? Before they even start reading the names of the titles, which often get lost sometimes, it's the description that should be doing the job to help sell the show. So a couple things. Yes, include keywords and do it in a way that makes sense for humans and obviously include a lot of derivative keywords that would also make sense for search engines too. Uh, search for podcasts is not quite where you know YouTube and Google are yet, but it, I, I, I envision it'll get there at some point. But if you wanna see a sample of a description that's been worked on and, and, and tried and true, uh, come and check out mine. You can borrow the same sort of framework. But it really starts with uh, my name and my blog name. You don't wanna repeat the exact podcast name in the description. They've also explicitly mentioned that that can also get you removed from iTunes as well. But make sure to include information as soon as they start reading, they start to be attracted to, well, this is the kind of show I've been looking for. So for example, I say here, I reveal all of my online strategies, blogging, uh, income sources, and killer marketing tips, and this is the important part, so that you can be ahead of the curve with your online business or blog. That is the benefit. And this is where most people don't think about their description. They just kind of go, here's what the show's about. That's, that's called features, features, features. You wanna also talk about the benefits. What is in this for the listener? Encourage them by teasing what kinds of things they're gonna learn and they're gonna be more likely to click through. So that's just a very quick, high-level overview of the metadata that is important about your show. The second part of the metadata that's important are your titles. Check them out, read them over. Are they enticing? Are they interesting? Are the descriptions something that would actually encourage people to click on that particular one? Uh, just You can check here by clicking the info. On the info on the desktop version, the links aren't clickable, but uh, on the podcast app, they are. So make sure you do have links, perhaps back to your show notes page or any other resources, and you'll be good to go there. All right, next section, three beginner to pro changes that have to be made. These are things that you must do in order for you to grow your podcast, to grow as a podcaster, for you to stay sane, for you to not give up, because I promise you, if you don't keep these things in mind, you will burn out, you will lose momentum, and we do not want that to happen because your listeners need you. They're out there. Some of them are, have found you already, but there's plenty more that need to know you exist, and so we're gonna talk about that. And first, it starts with pro tip number one, and that is, Automation, you have to learn about automation. That is removing yourself from the process of producing your show as much as possible because guess what? If you're doing what you did at the beginning and you're still doing all the ins and outs and the little things and the little publications and moving things here and there and editing and slicing and dicing and, and exporting and tagging and publishing, those are hours wasted that you can be using for other things. First of all, it's gonna drive you mad if you continue to do this, but secondly, you don't have any more time to do the marketing and the things that you need to do to turn your podcast into a business and support you. So I, I heard this quote, you're producing your podcast is a terrible marketing strategy. Obviously, a podcast can help you with marketing, but the act of actually producing it is not a marketing strategy. Just publishing alone is not going to get you new listeners and downloads. It'll get you a few, but the real momentum starts to happen when you open up your time by learning about automation and how to remove yourself from that process so that you can put more time back into marketing your show, getting in front of new audiences, and actually working on your funnels and your business plan and all those sorts of things. So a few things I wanna share with you, some tips I have for you in regards to automation that are gonna help you sooner than later. Number one would be to get hired help. And if you are looking for somebody to edit your show and even produce your show notes, uh, you can go to podcastpress.io slash AMP, I have a partner uh, partnership with them. If you're just getting the podcast edited, you can get your first month free. It's like half price for the first month if you get show notes uh, for their show notes pricing option, but I've worked with them. A lot of my students have worked with them and they're great uh, and, and they work very well. Um, if you do not have the budget yet uh, or you don't yet value your time over the money that you have, well then you can train your team. Over the shoulder viewing, whether that's a person following you as you produce your next episode or even you screen recording, that's how you can start to hand off some of the help, especially some of the stuff that is done on a repeated basis with every episode. And then finally, you could develop more efficient systems. This is regardless if you hire other people or not. There are likely things that you could do from 
uh, getting guests on the show and scheduling them to the production of your show, the uh, editing process, to the exporting process, planning your uh, p- planning your shows ahead of time. These are all parts of your system and SOPs being standard operating procedures, things that you do over and over again can be improved and become more efficient, thus giving you back more time so that you can do other things like, let's move on to pro sort of mindset shift number two, and that is marketing. Marketing is as much an act, the act of marketing, the act of putting your show out there in front of other people who can find it and love it and share it, yes, but marketing is also a mindset shift because you know, you have to know, that your show is something that is worth somebody else's time, that needs to get out there. You almost have a responsibility or an obligation to get it out there, and the problem is marketing. We all think marketing is just putting it on social media, and that's so beginner. You are past that. Podcasters are great at asking their subscribers to become new subscribers. We think that posting on social media and all the repurposing that we do is gonna grow our show, but guess what? We're only showing our show with people who already know we have a show. That's not going to work. Here is the trick to growing your show. I'm just gonna give it to you right now. The best place to promote your podcast is where people are already listening to podcasts. Because think about it, if you are on social media, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, wherever, and you share your show, a person has to stop what they're doing there. They were there for some other reason. They find you, they have to be interested enough to click away from what they were doing to go and open up a podcast app and then determine whether or not it's worth clicking play. And then they can make a decision to uh, see if it's worth going to your show and subscribing. But if a person is already listening to a podcast, somebody else's podcast, They're already in a podcast app and in a great state of mind to, especially with an endorsement from somebody else, subscribe to your show too. This is Seth Godin, a very, very prominent marketer and somebody who I look up to quite a bit. He wrote this article not too long ago. It says, podcasting is the new blogging. Here's Neil Patel says, hey, forget guest posting. Here's why guest podcasting is king. And this person, I don't even know who this is, but they were writing on Medium. They're writing about these two articles. Here's the thing. Guest podcasting is the new guest blogging. Guest blogging, when blogging was a thing, uh, or the thing, it was the best way to grow the the blog. Why? Because blogs easily connected to each other. You could comment on one, one blog, and then a person can easily click on your comment and go to your blog, and then subscribe to that, and you know you get the RSS feed, and you know then people comment, and it kind of just grows from there. With podcasting, it's a little bit different. You have to work a little bit harder, and this is why podcasters are struggling, because they don't want to do the work. You have to do the work. So you have to work to get on other people's shows. And you need to know what your superpower is so that people will be enticed so that you're going to be more marketable yourself in addition to the show that you have too. And then pro tip number three, profit. You have to understand that actually let me let me turn the camera on really quick because I just I just need to talk to you. Hold up. Hey, uh, thanks again for watching this. We are, I think, more than halfway through. I hope you're enjoying the content so far. But I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about profit. Some podcasters think that profiting from your podcast is bad. It should be a thing that you should continue to do for free. It's free content. You shouldn't make money from that. And I think that's crazy because you deserve to get paid for the great things that you have to offer your audience. Now, that doesn't mean you take everything away that they've already had access to and then start charging for it. That's a no-no. That's where you can get in trouble for charging for things that people already had access to. The answer to making money from your podcast is offering additional value and services that would be worth a person's money in exchange for whatever it is that you're offering. And even if you're just a hobby podcaster, you deserve to make money, if anything, so that you can continue podcasting and, and serving other people too, right? So I think it's really smart for us, no matter what level we're at, to already start thinking about generating a plan to make some money from our show. Now, this does not mean advertising and sponsorship. Actually, I don't recommend doing that up front. And for most of us, it is very hard to do because we don't have the numbers to attract certain advertisers. Now, that being said, even if you have a small audience, but they're very targeted and you're in a specific niche and people and other companies can understand the value of that targeted audience that you have. You don't need tens of thousands of listeners every episode to attract them. You just maybe need a few hundred, and if that brand is aligned perfectly with that company, then you can generate an income by perhaps affiliate marketing. That's one of the four different ways that you can make money from your podcast. Let's go over them right now, and again, I just 
I'm not. Even, I'm going to forget about the slides for this one. I'm just going to share it with you because hopefully you could see just how passionate I am about this because I want to help you generate more income. Number one, advertising and sponsorships. We're not going to talk about that right now. It's not something that you should start off with. And at this level, you're most likely going to benefit more from these other three strategies. Secondly, would be selling your own products. If you have your own coaching programs or services, guess what? A podcast is a perfect platform to set that up for you. Online courses, anything, your own products, your own merch, people will fall in love with you and your voice, and they're going to want to support you and uh, letting them know about the products and services you have to offer are great. I'll share with you a little tip just to soften that sell in just a moment after I go over these uh, two additional monetization strategies. The third one is affiliate marketing. That is generating an income by recommending other people or um, other companies' products. And then fourth and finally is the Patreon model where people are supporting you because they're fans. And this is sort of like a PBS paid for by viewers like you model where you can set up a Patreon account your patrons can help support you by uh, devoting a certain amount of dollars to you for every episode or every month, and then they get access to special things. Perhaps they get access to the episodes early or a free webinar with you or training or something like that. There's many ways to do that. Again, you're just offering additional value in it, on top of what they're already used to getting from you, and they want to support you. So I had said it just a second ago, there are ways that you can use your podcast to soften that, that sort of worry that you might have with selling. First of all, you can sell and serve at the same time. You can sell and serve at the same time. And using your podcast, this asset that you've built, you can do something that's very special to help you sell even more. And here's the trick. If you're selling your own courses or your own products, perhaps you have a coaching program, invite a student or somebody you've helped, somebody who's paid for your program on your show. And don't ask them questions about the product and how awesome it was. That stuff's going to come out naturally. What you want to do is have a conversation with that person about where they were. Why? Because that's where your audience is. What they struggle with. Why? Because your audience is struggling with that too. And what helped them through that process. And that's going to come out to be you, which is great. And so that's the – like I've done this a few times and it's just – been bonkers for encouraging people who had doubts or, or, or who were on the fence of buying my programs or courses or getting coaching. It just really helped them feel secure about the fact that, wow, if that person had done it and they felt the same thing I did, then maybe I can have this, the same results as them too. So that relatability and, and, and the promotion not coming from you, but for the person who is a guest on your show is absolutely key. And then when it comes to affiliate marketing, use the exact same strategy. For example, I interviewed uh, ConvertKit founder Nathan Barry, and that episode has accounted for over $50,000 in affiliate earnings because why? No, not because we talk about how amazing a product ConvertKit is, but we cut, because we're helping the audience build a relationship with the founder of that company. That's the struggle with affiliate marketing because it's not your product, so you have to work a little bit harder to get your audience to actually trust that product. And when you tell the story behind that product, the origin story and the struggles and why this thing was built for them, well, it's an easy sell at the end. And of course, if there's something special, like an exclusive deal that you can work out with those affiliates, that can help uh, help it even further. So sorry, I, I don't know if that felt like a rant or something, but um, just want to show you how passionate I am about this, and I want you to see, succeed so much. So we're going to go back into the slides here because I just gave you the uh, automation, marketing, and the profit talk, and we're going to go into the final three call to actions that you can do right now related to those things just to kind of push you a little bit and, and give you some action that you can use moving forward. And then, plus I have one other thing I want to share with you related to some next steps that we could take together to help you uh, grow your show even more. All right, so let's finish strong here. Three calls to actions for you. First call to action is to write down every step you take the next time you create a podcast episode. When I run this exercise with my students, every single person is so surprised that it takes so long after they start writing everything down because they realize, wow, they actually don't have to do all those things, whether it's just all those things in general because a lot of those things may be a waste of time or all those things themselves, which means they're more likely to hand off things that they know they should hand off so that they could focus on everything that they need to focus on. And that's what I want you to do. This is part of your automation practice and it starts with knowing what actually happens. So. This is very easy. The next time you create a podcast episode, just write every single step down. If it includes a guest, starts when you start interacting with them. And then just see how long that list is and where you can trim down. Call to action number two. 
reach out to 10 podcasters in your space, your niche, and ask to be a guest on their podcast. You wanna make sure the audiences align, but this is just a call to action to get you out of your comfort zone because likely you haven't asked probably in a while or ever. And there's likely people out there who you've wanted to ask, but you haven't. Now's the time to do it because like I said earlier, just just producing your podcast isn't gonna help. You need to be on other people's shows because those podcast listeners are gonna come over to you and become listeners for you and share your show and become raving fans. So uh, reach out to 10 podcasters in your space. Ask to be a guest on their podcast. Not for you. Like, don't just say, hey, I want to be on your guest on your show because, uh, you know, I'm awesome and I want you to do this for me so I can get more. So that Nobody's going to say yes if you ask that way. Always approach it with how you can offer value and provide a service or give something to that podcast host and their audience that they have yet to hear. And then finally, call to action number three, invite a customer onto your podcast or invite a founder of a product you promote. And of course, in that podcast episode, you want to promote those particular products. Uh, and just stick to one product per episode, and I, I guarantee you, you're going to have more people getting very curious about what it's going to be like to be just like them or want to get involved with that product. So this is going to help you begin to start generating more of an income with this incredible asset that you've built called the podcast. And a bonus call to action for you and hey, I know you like the specific strategies, especially to grow your show and market your show. You know, guest podcasting is just one of a few giant marketing levers that you can pull. And so what you can do right now is register for a free live webinar that's going to happen. Or if you're watching this in the distant future, it might be a replay. But uh, right now you can register for double your downloads. That is below this video. There's various times that you can watch that. And this is where you can get direct advice specifically for mainly the marketing portion of the sort of AMP, if you didn't notice, that's what Automation Marketing and Profit stands for, uh, just like my course, Amped Up Podcasting, but so far all this stuff is free for you, and this is sort of a glimpse of what it's like in my premium course, and I'm not asking for anything right now other than to register for double your downloads below this video. Uh, you can go to all of them or just the one uh, that makes most sense to you, and I look forward to giving you more specific advice to help you increase your download numbers. And we're gonna get a little bit more granular with some of those strategies uh, during those times. So register below. And again, I just wanna thank you so much for coming on and watching this. And please feel free to share. Just take this link above and, and share it. I don't care how many people you share it with. This is, if you know other podcasters and you know this is helpful, uh, hopefully this will be, be of value to them. And obviously you know that I'm gonna take care of them as well. So, hey, I appreciate you. Keep going. Let me know what you think at Pat Flynn on Instagram or Twitter. And I'd just love to know if uh, you thought this was useful. And hopefully I'll see you on the, uh, on the live training for double your downloads. Thanks so much.